He, of course, is the British director who made Fatal Attraction, which was pretty good, and also Nine and a Half Weeks, a piece of would-be erotica which so failed to grab my interest that as Kim Bassinger masturbated, I found myself murmuring, oh, for goodness sake, woman, get on with it. You may think this says something worrying about me. I say it says something critical of the film. However, Adrian Lyne's latest work is a psychological thriller called Jacob's Ladder. It's about an ex-soldier who's haunted by a bizarre incident that took place during the Vietnam War. From New York, Tom Brooke has more to tell us. Although Jacob's Ladder opens in the jungles of the Vietnam War, action quickly moves to another contemporary jungle, the New York subway system. Here we find Tim Robbins, who plays the leading role of Vietnam veteran Jacob Singer, experiencing the first of what turn out to be numerous horrific incidents. kind of like two movies in one in a way um, in in that on one level it's a psychological thriller that you uh, that you get very involved in I think um, a man wakes up one day and, and realizes it uh, thinks he's going mad he's hallucinating he's seen de demons and then at the end of the movie you have to reassess everything that you've seen because you haven't been seeing what you thought you were seeing Jacob is being haunted by demons while he's on a metaphysical journey, somewhat akin to the pathway symbolized by the biblical Jacob's ladder, the ladder which Jacob saw in a dream leading to heaven. This journey is truly terrifying because Adrian Lyne has created demons which take on a mutilated human form. I use this kind of shaking, tormented kind of um, um, device, and, and the advantage of it was that the audience couldn't see too clearly what they were looking at. So they always had to fill in with their imagination um, a part of what they were looking at. And they could get a sense of what they were looking at, and it was frightening. But they, they always had to fill in 30% with their imagination. Of course, I think people's imagination is always that much more frightening than the reality. Jacob's Ladder deals with the hereafter. In this respect, it's part of a trend of recent Hollywood films which have included supernatural themes, like this year's blockbuster, Ghost. Both films were written by the same man. One of my goals in writing the movie was to write what I felt was the most frightening film I could write. I wanted to find the source of my own fear, in a sense, my own terror. And I wanted to go into that terror, and I wanted to go through it. There's no denying that Jacob's Ladder is an extremely disturbing film, and this might be preventing it from taking in really big dollars at the American box office. But it's not just the horror of the film that's possibly turning off the audience. It's also the structure, because you're never quite sure whether you're watching fantasy or reality. The sense of time is thrown off. You're not really sure where Jacob is at what point in time in his life. Well, it's a very strange film. A lot of people won't understand. It's hard to follow at times, but it's, I, I thought it was really good. I think you enjoy it after you've seen it a lot more than like during. You know? Because the content of Jacob's Ladder is rather heavy going, Adrian Lyne deliberately chose Tim Robbins, an actor with a good humoured disposition, to play the lead role. Because this is kind of a dark story, I thought it was important to have somebody, an actor who had a sense of humour apart from anything else, and who found comedy, found humour in situations where it wasn't necessarily written down on the page. Critics have praised Tim Robbins for his performance, but overall, reviews of the film have been mixed. According to Variety's official tally, seven critics liked the film, 12 were against it, and two had mixed reactions. Some thought the film exploitative. I thought it exploited something about which there's a lot of uh, pain in this country, which is the mental condition of Vietnam vets. Uh, because, because they fought an unpopular war, and because it, there were so much drugs there and everything, there's this whole sort of unholy uh, aura around the Vietnam vets. All of this is touched on in a movie uh, it, uh, it, that is essentially a horror film. So you have something, you know, some real life s stress and strain there that's just yielding fodder to this, the scare movie. So I, I found that I was offended by it. Other people were not. They just say, well, it's the guy's nightmare. Some critics describe your work as being manipulative. Do you find that a compliment, or does, do you take offense to that? Well, I don't think they mean it as a compliment, but I, but I think that, that all of cinema 
there is manipulation. I think Hitchcock, God knows, was the, was the final manipulator. You know, uh, uh, and of course there's an element of that. I suppose what people are getting at is that they think that you're getting people to respond more emotionally than intellectually. Well, I, 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 I mistrust intellectual re reactions to anything, I have to say. I'm, I, I, I'm much uh, more at home with an emotional reaction to something, to be honest. Adrian Lyne has created some incredibly striking, frightening images in Jacob's Ladder that linger and haunt long after the film is over. But for many people, the film's ending, which it would be unfair to give away, comes over as a clever trick and doesn't seem to justify the relentless two-hour horror show that precedes it. Jacob's Ladder opens here in April.